We're headed west. At the moment we're heading south. But we're going to the west of the city to a suburb called Fittus. Its official name is Page View, but it came to be known by its residents as Fittus. No one knows now for sure where the name came from and if it has any meaning, what it means, but that was the fond name for the area. When I started photographing here in 76, the community was still largely intact. That's the 23rd Street Mosque. And the houses here consist of some of the original Indian houses, and then those that were built by the Department of Community Development. We were wonderful in our ability to invent the meaning of words. The Department of Community Development came here and destroyed that community. For example, these here were built by the Department of Community Development. And as you see, they are now little fortresses, as are so many of our houses in Johannesburg. A working class white community next door to this agitated for the removal. Whites didn't want people of color living next door to them. This was as crude as that. And what happened here is typical of what happened in almost every town in South Africa. childhood, you know that. I remember David coming on a bicycle, coming and cycling, and I used to wonder why does he do this? And I mean, I was going to school then, so I saw this man photographing all these ruins, and in my little world in those days, this was home, and I didn't really understand the full implications of forced removals. Because of the apartheid regime's racist ideologies, this area was destroyed. Fitos Museum is a very good way to understand land dispossession, destruction of family units, and a community. These are Paul Weinberg's photographs, and Paul and I have a long history. He's walked this whole journey with me, like with David. I mean, I've known them for so many years, and these two photographers were very generous in just donating the pictures to the Fitters Museum. Had it not been for their photographs, we wouldn't have a pictorial record of my forebears and my community. This shows 14th Street in its heyday. And as you can see, it had the elements that are essential for good cities, and that is density, diversity, and complexity. It was a community of blended cultures. There's an Indian concept called Upar Makan Niche Dukan, meaning living quarters upstairs and trading premises downstairs, and it's a very smart way of using space. And the people that were forcibly removed from this area, especially in this particular street, were <coughs> traders. White people, black people, all kinds of people would come from all over the area to shop here on 14th Street. The streets were very narrow, and I found that the best way of coming here to photograph was to ride a bicycle. I came in on a bicycle with a couple of panniers on it so that I could carry a 4x5 view camera or a Hasselblad and some film and a lightweight tripod. So I would come in here and photograph people, shops, whatever I wanted. 
I got to know Ozzy Dockrat, one of the Indian men who had a shop here. He had a shop just down the road here. It was called the Subway Grocers. If there was a big cricket match internationally, he would put the score outside on the sidewalk so that people coming by could see what the score was. And he knew the tram drivers who came past, and it, it was not it was not impossible for a tram driver to stop his tram and go in there and say, Ozzy, you've got the score wrong, man. So-and-so's out now. It was a very popular place and he was a very popular man. His home was here, right here. And this was the core of the house. It was reinforced concrete because it needed to support the water tank. When the front-end loaders came in here to destroy everything in 1977, they couldn't push this over. It's reinforced concrete. So it remains here now as a, a crazy monument to apartheid. He had to move to Lenasia, which is the Indian suburb that was set up outside the city to absorb these people who were displaced. The government built the so-called Oriental Plaza a shopping mall, which they said would then substitute for the shops that they were destroying here. One day, it was a Sunday morning, I came riding here on my bicycle, and there was Ozzy Dockrat. And we greeted each other, and I said to him, you know, Mr. Dockrat, I cannot tell you how ashamed I am of what is being done here to you in my name as a white voter. And then I said to him, you know, I've got a problem because they're knocking down the buildings and I can't remember what was there. And he said, Mr. Goldblatt, I feel as though I've been to the dentist and I've had teeth extracted and I've run my tongue over the spaces and I try to remember the shape of what was there. It was an extraordinary statement. <laughs> 